This is a show about the American entrepreneur, the dreamers, the believers, the achievers. We discover those making a better life for others through a better business. That's what it means to be in Multiviews Good Company. Everybody wonders what my job is. My job is to raise a family. And the way we raise our family is by raising Angus. Welcome to the Texas Panhandle, a region of the country that helped define an American industry. Two Bar Angus, however, is blending an age-old family business with the biometrics expected of this modern era. Two Bar is just the Canal family. If it gets done, it's our family that does it, whether it's Joe on the plow, Wesley feeding the cattle, the twins helping give shots. We divide and conquer. Living the dream. I mean, 13 year olds get to drive a tractor. I was 10 when I started plowing my first field and been doing it ever since. I've been helping out with the business ever since I can remember. Every day I wake up and go feed the cows first thing. Some days it'll be right after I do that, it's go catch the cows so we can vaccinate them. Basketball defense, get low. Or sometimes we got a bell hay at night and you'd rather be out with your friends or stuff like that. You'll hear them complain some days, uh, but none of them are uh, afraid to work and they're pretty accustomed to it. We're trying to grow, breed, and select animals that are more efficient, that can take country that is too poor to farm and turn that unproductive land into high quality beef in a package that can survive in their environment. And that's the trick. The approach we take to our Angus is pretty different. We use a lot of data, a lot of data. We utilize DNA, we weigh our calves at birth, we weigh them again at weaning, we'll weigh them at yearling, we'll scan the ribeyes, measure the marbling, the back fat, the hip height, the scrotal circumference, and the docility. And we'll do all of these things for our customers because raising Angus is not about raising a black hide, it's about the information that goes along with that animal. This ain't your granddaddy's ranching. Numbers and figures play a crucial role in the modern cattle breeding process. Two Bar Angus uses expected progeny difference, or EPD, to leverage the genetic potential of each bovine's DNA. You can look at the EPDs of the sire and then the EPDs of the dam, and then you can put those together, and then you can kind of figure out what you might get. Before, you'd have a group of 10, and you might get seven that were bad and three that were good, but now you can breed for better, and then you can get seven that are good and three that are bad. It's pretty much taking all the guessing out of it. People say, well, you, you're getting too worried and too caught up in the numbers, but the information is what makes my animal different than something you go to buy just on appearance alone. Though genetic data is key for better cattle sales, that same math aids the herd when the weather goes south. The last few years, we've been in a horrible drought. We learned how extremely valuable water is. The drought has put a big damper on things. The year before the drought, we weaned off 900 pound bull calves. Since then, you know, that hasn't happened. We went from raising all of our feed needs to spending 150,000 on roughage. Nothing really in, whether it be farming or cattle business, is just real consistent. We sell our private treaty bulls in the spring and we have our annual sell. So, we get two paychecks a year, and to budget for six months on a single paycheck sometimes becomes a challenge. 
We wasn't buying anything unless we had to have it, and we were feeding the cows less. But if we're doing our breeding programs right, our cows should be more efficient. We decided to rely on that a little bit last year, and we came through it pretty good. By using artificial insemination to combine the genes of his best bulls and heifers, Steve increases his chances of raising stronger cattle. We caught this cow in heat, and the typical rule is to AI her 12 hours after she was in standing heat. The reason we AI is because we can use the best bulls in the world instead of the best bull we can afford. I can ship semen on a bull I have to somebody on the other coast and they can breed hundreds of cows in one day to the one bull, which that is nowhere possible naturally. Okay, our number's 1736, and we're gonna AI her today to cash. One thing about AI, you have gotta keep good records or it doesn't do you any good. And another deal about AI is you gotta have your semen in a semen tank. This is liquid nitrogen. There is cash. Oh, look, it's the color of money. I've got water here warmed. You don't want your semen too hot when you thaw it out. You want it right at 96 degrees. Get it out and dry it off. Now that is all loaded in the end of that gun and I put it in my shirt to keep it a constant temperature and my body temperature is real close to that. So it's a little bit of AI lube. I'm gonna have one hand, it'll go in this cow rectally and then I'll put this uh, syringe intervaginally, then I'll release the semen. But you want to get in her just as cleanly as you can. And right now I've got a hold of her cervix and I'm trying to straighten out any vaginal folds. There, I just got through the cervix. Now I'll mash the plunger and clean out my semen. And that's in a nutshell how you AI a cow. <laughs> Insemination inevitably leads to pregnant cattle. And just like in human pregnancies, each expectant mother must go to the doctor for regular checkups. Today we're taking in eight cows that we're going to sex the embryos on. Once they're pregnant, we have that embryo sexed. So the person buying the cow knows whether they're getting a heifer calf or a bull calf. We like to do the fetal sexing between ballpark 60 days and 75 days of pregnancy. This is the fetus we're looking at. Right here, this is the prepuce on the bull calf. The prepuce Why? would be where its penis comes out. He'll be a bull the rest of his life. It's these progress reports that ensure healthy calves, but every now and then complications do occur. A bun left in the oven too long makes it difficult or dangerous to give birth, both for the heifer and the calf. Today, vet Mike Mims must perform an emergency C-section, and luckily for Steve, this isn't one of his. She wasn't fully dilated, and he wouldn't have survived had we not done a C-section. Pretty routine. I don't know how many I've done in my career, but she'll be okay. Rearing cattle has never been easy. It takes a thick hide and a strong support system to prosper. And fortunately for the canoles, they got a good bit of both. Laura and I have been in the cow-calf business for about 20 years. Steve and I work together almost 24-7. Most days it's great. Uh, of course, you know, yes, we have our off days. <laughs> and you just kind of work through it and go on. We have our days. All couples do. We have a beautiful family and we get to live out in a beautiful country and we're really thankful for what we have. It's, uh, it's just, it's a way of life that we enjoy. I think Two Bar Angus is a good company and we want to keep good company and to do that we have to meet our expectations of our customers. We believe you can have the phenotype and the genotype. You can have extremely good genetics in an extremely attractive package that function on your place. Now Steve would tell you that Two Bar's success is just God's will. But divine or not, he's taken his passion and brought Mother Nature into the 21st century. It's businesses and families like the Canoles that highlight the American dream and that we strive to highlight too, here 
on Good Company.